Why? Because it happens very rarely. Uh, so how it happened, most of them want to know about it. I know you gave your attempt again in 2021, but the first attempt is one is very big achievement. He is in IRS, Indian Revenue Service Income Tax. So please share your, how you cracked your first attempt. Thank you, sir. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, so yeah, uh, like sir said, uh, my first attempt was 2020, and I was lucky enough to get a rank in the, that attempt. Yeah, so uh, I think few things that really worked me worked or came in handy in my first attempt were that the topmost thing was that I ensured I had the least number of resources possible for every subject. I ensured I did not go for more than one book at all for any subject. This is because I know we have very limited time in hand. And I know it is possible for us to take up too much. And in the end, we'll have no time to revise all of it in the later on. So that's why for every subject, I ensured I only took one source. And I know there is a lot of dilemma in terms of choosing resources, you know, because every time you see a question that is not from your source in the prelims question paper, you begin to question, are my, question, are my sources good enough? Or do I need to look at other textbooks? But trust your own sources, have confidence in your own sources. So first thing is definitely uh, keeping the least number of resources possible. Second was this one thing that my father always used to tell me, which is that you work hard for this two or three years, put your heart and soul into it, and for the rest 40 years of your life, you'll be happy and sorted. So I ensured, I mean, I tried my best to implement this thing. Although, of course, there are deviations and distractions in between. So I think this sort of philosophy that my father has drilled into me, that has come in handy again. So uh, therefore, my strategy to ensure I am sort of, you know, blinkered. That is, I'm not taking too much up that I can't do. Or like if I'm actually going on the right path, I follow this path of constant evaluation. You know, you are evaluating yourself at every step. By which I mean, uh, say for prelims, you did a particular subject, like say geography, I would take a small sectional test, say 50 questions ka sectional test, and then see, okay, is this, am I actually going in the right direction, or do I need to improve more? Same happened with mains too, like, you know, when I'm writing essays, I had gotten them evaluated from my seniors, or like my other friends who are preparing for UPSC. I'm sure all of you also have the luxury of friends who are preparing for UPSC along with you. So this constant evaluation, and why I emphasize on this is, a lot of times it's easy for us to get carried away and we end up getting neck deep into something and then later on we realize, oh, maybe this is not working for me. But then the time is too late again for you to go back and start afresh, right? So wherever possible, whenever possible, evaluate yourself at every step. So I think these are sort of the four things that really came in handy. But if I were to boil it down to one important thing that sort of did all the difference, that do or die thing, it was note making. I'm a person who cannot sort of revise or cannot get something into my head without making proper notes. And by proper notes, I mean something which you can revise, which you can always fall back on. Because I have seen myself, and I've did this mistake too in the beginning, and I've seen a lot of my friends too, is when you make notes, you sort of end up paraphrasing and reproducing the entire material again in your notes. And that's not going to help. It's going to add too much stress towards, uh, you know, closer to the exam. So I think one very key thing that really helped me was this making very concise, precise notes for almost every subject that's out there, including for polity. You know, for a book like Lakshmi Kant, which is seemingly like, you know, already in a notes format. I still ended up making uh, short notes for that too. So try wherever possible to make short and concise notes, which you can understand in your own language, which has all these, you know, short codes, cheat codes, and all of this, which will help you recall stuff, you know. Because if you are unable to recall it in the exam, it's as good as not studying it at all. There's no point if you revise it 100 times from the actual book, and you're unable to recall it in the actual exam. So it's as good as just not having read that, right? So the recalling part is very important, and for that, you need to have these precise notes. So I think these are you know, few factors that sort of helped me get through. And I also considered there was a huge factor of luck because I was not confident that I'll get through at all in this attempt. So uh, that's definitely there. And what I sort of planned for is, you know, just to show you guys a glimpse of what my notes were for both prelims. And uh, one, pr uh, by the way, how many of you are giving 2022 prelims? All of you. Achha. And you guys have given 2021 attempt. So one problem that me and like a lot of other people also did face, particularly with 
2020 and 21 paper series, they're becoming extremely unpredictable, you know. You, d you do all the standard sources, but still a lot of people are failing to crack the exam. And there's one sort of phrase that one of my friends put very succinctly, which is three C's. She said there are three C's that are helping us crack prelims. And it's calmness, confidence, and clarity, you know. These are three things that she said uh, were really helping in the exam. And I truly actually believe that worked. Because uh, truth be told, this attempt, I wasn't planning to give this attempt because I was already burnt out after the last attempt. And I wasn't planning to do so. So I thought I'd go to the foundation course at Labasna and then take the 2022 attempt. But my parents were stubborn. They sort of prodded me into, you know, taking this attempt. So I barely studied for like two to three days and sort of just ended up giving the examination. But I think that common sense thing, which I lacked in the first attempt, first attempt, my revision and my studying helped. In the second attempt, I had no time to revise. I did not do any vision, current affair magazines, anything at all, because my interview was just over. So I think it was a common sense that made up for lack of revisions or, you know, lack of, you know, doing a lot of tests. I couldn't solve any tests either. So, yeah, I thought I'd probably give you guys a quick run of, you know, how I did things. And feel very, very free to interrupt me at any point in time to just ask, you know, any questions, okay? These are the three things that my, that my friend said are the three C's that really help you. And this also involved clarity. Now, there are three different things that I, I did for each of them and that really came in handy this time. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, first thing I would sort of start with is how to have this confidence, you know, like when you enter the exam hall. Because I think 50% of the difference comes from your mindset when you do the exam. 50% of the battle is done before the exam itself. The rest 50 is done in the exam hall. And again, in that a lot of it comes from uh, your confidence. And I had seniors of mine who were scoring extremely well in their uh, mock tests, you know, upwards of 120 and 130. But they still ended up scoring very low in prelims and all of that. Simply because the moment you sit in the exam hall, it's a whole different ball game altogether, you know. It's very nervous, you know, you get all tensed up and all. So your brain stops functioning the way it does otherwise. So the best way you do it is you simulate those conditions as well as possible at home. So for my first attempt in 2020, what I did was I took around 10 to 12 mocks, right, up, up till prelims. At the same time every day from 9.30 to 11.30, I would take bath and sit like I would do on the actual day, you know. Uh, sit from 9.30 to 11.30, take the prelims, including with a mask on because that was the first prelims in COVID. You wouldn't want to have this distraction of mask. And I would sit on a stool because you never know, some centers got terrible and you would have a terrible chair. So I would sit on a stool, turn the fan off, put your mask on and, you know, take the test for 10 to 12 days. So on the D-Day when you go to the exam hall, your mind will be like, Are yaar, I've been doing this for the last 12 days, what's, what's so new about it? It's just another day. And that makes a huge difference, you know, because it is from this confidence that stems the other two, calmness and confidence, that makes a huge difference in how you score. So I, I would strongly recommend a lot of people do this. They keep on revising and revising and revising until the prelims and they don't take enough tests. Even when they do, uh, you know, they do one hour simulation and then leave the one hour for later. They wouldn't bubble the OMR. They would just mark on the question paper. No, it's a huge game and the huge, you know, biggest of filtering happens in prelims level. Around 10 lakh people apply and only 10,000 come through. So that's the di most difficult part. So you need to be best prepared for it. You need to respect this exam, otherwise it will throw you out. So uh, simulate, you know, as much as possible before your prelims. Take your mock seriously. That's the best advice I can give to all of you from my limited knowledge. And um, yeah, second thing is this uh, confidence. Uh, the uh, confidence part. And again, uh, I draw also draw this from one of my senior's experiences. Uh, again, he used to score a lot in his mock tests, but in the actual exam, he would end up marking a lot of negative things in the, lo in the last, you know, 20 minutes. You feel like, you know, you would think you want to say mark 90 questions, but when you go there, you end up only taking writing 80 questions and your mind will be like, I don't know, I need to mark those 90 questions. So you'll end up just marking the other 10 and this 10 will just throw you out of the exam, you know, because it's just a matter of 0.6 or 0.3 and your entire, you know, like life would go on a different track after that. So you need to be very good at risk taking in the uh, examination. And for that, there is some one method which my friends and I have sort of 
put together and that has really ca come in handy for the three of us like three of us managed to clear prelims both the times last time and this time so i'm sure like you guys can put in an iota of you know trust in this uh, method i'll come to this method just in a bit and then uh, yeah the last thing is a common sense too i think increasingly ups is sort of outsmarting all the coaching institutes or any materials that are out there so unless you have common sense you cannot sort of get through the questions you cannot prepare prepare and go what we do is we see some questions say some uh, obscure question from history and then you end up starting a new book because Array, i don't know this question and how do i do it so i think it's not possible for you to study every book that's out there and go so i think common sense is the thing that really comes in handy again so this common sense thing and risk taking thing i'll show you uh, in uh, yeah uh, so this is just a mock paper that i solved last year uh, so this confidence comes from taking appropriate risk okay and uh, what we did was we categorized every question into four categories one two three and four so first category is when you know sent answer like you know directly that's the correct answer and then category two is you you have eliminated two options see uh, i have eliminated a and d but i need to pick between b and c so that's category two question then category three is a question where I uh, sort of have to pick between three options. I eliminated one option. And category four is where I have absolutely no clue as to what the question is. So uh, immediately after getting the question paper, we would categorize the entire paper into these four things. And then uh, just start marking the uh, category one questions because you know they are 100% correct, you know, in the OMR sheet. Then comes the category two questions, then comes category three, and then see depending on the paper how many questions you would want to attempt. Don't have this figure in your head, okay, I need to attempt 90 questions, you know, because sometimes paper can be really difficult and make, attempting 90 questions can actually put you out of the exam. So after category three, uh, you don't go for category four unless it's a do or die situation, okay, because a lot of people end up taking this unnecessary risk because this category four questions are more likely to go wrong than they are to go correct because you have no clue of these questions so uh, do it that way and then that actually came in really handy in both my attempts in terms of taking the appropriate risk so yeah uh, this is uh, that thing and then yeah th this was last year's question paper and i thought i'll sort of show two to three questions as to how common sense worked last year yeah so uh, this is one this is one question that i thought would be a good example so in all the history books that we do spectrum or like you know bipin chandra and all you don't really find uh, these things and you might some people might wonder oh do we need to do more history books to sort of you know get this question correct but then this question can be easily solved through uh, you know common sense because see uh, it asks three names shanawas khan prem kumar sehgal and gurbakh singh dillon and if anyone who has studied history, modern history properly, you can clearly eliminate, you know, these things. Leaders of Swadeshi and Boycott Movement. It's unlikely that you don't know any of these three names if you've already read Swadeshi Movement and Boycott Movement. They are very famous movements. Same, interim government, uh, both Spectrum and Lakshmi Khan have the list of all the ministers of the interim government. I'm sure all of you have by hearted that. So you know these three names are not there in that. And then members of the drafting uh, committee. Again, these names are there in Lakshmi Khan and also are there in... Uh, spectrum so by common sense you can sort of eliminate these three things you need not know you know for 100 percent that these are actually offices of indian army but you need to trust yourselves if you have actually read polity and uh, you know spectrum properly and you can eliminate these three options and that's how this question can be uh, made correct uh, yeah so again this is another question with reference to chauser Tiogini temple situated near morena consider the following statements now people might wonder this is a very obscure question that no one really knows or it's not asked in the questions but all of us know that the uh, you know the proposal to make the central vista project is on the cards right the parliament is going to be remade and the design for it is inspired by this chauser Tiogini temple the design of the parliament so it was there in the newspapers when it came and uh, here in where the newspaper reading actually comes in handy so when you actually read the chauser Tiogini temple and you know parliament is not in a circular shape, shape per se, it's, it's, it's this way, right? You know how it is, sort of in an oval shape. So you can clearly eliminate it's the only circular temple uh, built in India. Okay. Uh, and the moment you eliminate two, see, you are down to one option, option C. 
so it's it's as simple as that you don't need to know whether and and also three is wrong i mean if you know a bit more it's about tantric cult so it's not vaishnava cult but you wouldn't even know it na deeply you know because if you can eliminate option 2 you can get the correct answer already same again this question also what a harvesting thing it was there in news everywhere dolavira and then unesco world heritage site so it can be easily done you know you need to be a bit curious to check what are the important things with each uh, important place and then you will be able to do this question easily yeah again this r2 code of practices constitutes a tool available for promoting the adoption of this is something you don't really find in any of the books or anything but then again common sense see if it's something to do with this option ramsa convention i'm sure all of us have done ramsa convention so it's highly unlikely we haven't heard of something if it were actually true so this can option can be eliminated same happens with these two things too environmental impact assessment there is a new thing which has come in environmental impact assessment 2020 new rules have come in so if you have read that you would know that this uh, this thing has not nowhere given in that uh, uh, environmental impact assessment things so likewise you can eliminate these three options using common sense and get there i will just show one last question and then quickly move on to other stuff yeah so again this is how is permaculture farming different from conventional chemical farming now you might begin to wonder that probably you need to do the whole of shankara as to probably answer this question and a lot of us actually end up doing that but this question can be easily solved through you know your common sense understanding now if you read through the options option 3 it says conventional chemical farming is easily possible in semi arid regions but permaculture farming is not easily possible in such regions now if you actually apply your common sense anything better or like a new culture is coming that is actually aims to provide this environmental sustainability right so it's highly unlikely that a new or evolving technology like permaculture is not cultivable in a semi arid region and also conventional chemical farming one of the biggest problems is that they use heavy water for the fertilizer to go in you know be it with the sugar cane or with the rice and paddy you know so you clearly can eliminate this option that conventional chemical farming is easily possible in semi arid regions it's not that's why arid regions are actually backward so this option and you eliminate this option c3 and 3 are gone and then you can clearly see like 1 and 2 are correct and then you will get it option b so these are the few ways that i thought common sense uh, helped in the in this paper and then now quickly i'll just show you guys the notes and i'll uh, so yeah so these are like the short notes that i made for a quick revision you know before prelims and this is like that one time investment you know it really comes in handy for your every prelims you know should you need it and it's highly likely we might need it so uh, you might wonder this this thing is actually there in uh, spectrum you know in the end the list is there but then it's not so convenient for reading and you can always add extra information uh, sideways you know so this is all the organizations and associations in modern history that i made i had about like 105 110 of them when in mocks also when you find a new institution you would just come and add it here so uh, yeah this this is modern history and then see i put all the words at one place so that i can quickly revise all the words instead of going through the bulky 100 110 pages in uh, spectrum yeah and the governors and vice royals i sort of by hearted the entire years like you know start from uh, roger drake until uh, the end lord mount patton so i sort of evolved a pattern as to okay how many years were the gap in between you know with each vice roy here there is say a pattern of four years gap four times it's easy you can evolve your own own patterns and then it's a alternating pattern of 656565 three times so this way i ensured like from the beginning till the end i could remember so then when questions come like you know blah 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 policy is taken under the rule of some vice roy you can clear, you know or like you know as simple as satyagraha movement happened in the you know tenure ship of particular vice roy you know which year satyagraha has happened or like uh, swaraj movement has happened and you can clearly eliminate because you know which year the vice roy has come in and this will really help you eliminate options and you know score well in modern history which is a low hanging fruit yeah and then these are the important congress sessions yeah and and these are the legislations that you know are very important and i thought and these are all over the place in both polity and uh, in lakshmikant and spectrum so for you to actually get a, a complex picture of it and also how things are evolving from each act to the next act with each 20 years of gap 
I would highly recommend you make you know short and simple notes like this because it helps. Like you know you can underline and see how things kept on evolving from one year to you know eighteen thirteen and then eighteen thirty three and then eighteen fifty three. You can see this. And I also extensively used maps for a lot of subjects: history, geography, uh, environment, everything. Because maps are a great tool to put a lot of information at one place and then revise. So I mapped all the Ashokan edicts here. Yeah, and I sort of wrote down everything on one map. So instead of again going back and looking at everything, you can just sort of come here, and then I also use different colors to sort of make it fun while revising. Uh, and it really helps you to remember because we are we have good visual memory. You know, the more you look at it, you sort of remember this image in your head, and you will be able to recall it in the exam instead of reading a whole bunch of information that way. Yeah, and then these are the Harappan sites. I drew the map and I marked uh, everything here. And while you do it, you sort of get a bit curious as to what thing is what, and like th that's how I sort of kept on just I just googled up you know which place is famous for which, and Dolavera clearly was famous for water harvesting, and I could solve the question because of that. This I did last year in my twenty uh, twenty attempt. Same, I marked all the rivers of India in this thing, and it, it took about three to four hours, but it, it it's really worth it, you know, because. There was a question this year as to they gave four rivers and asked which of the four two rivers originate in Eastern Ghats, and I remember this entire image in my head. So you two options were Rishikulya and Vamsadhara, and I could clearly mark this thing, you know, and yeah, and it also helps you, you know in terms of tributaries, everything. And after this, there are also other maps about mountains and glaciers that I also mapped. So you sort of juxtapose both the things in your head. So you can always sort of recall which glacier has which river at its source, or which river is originating from which mountain or which glacier, and it really helps you to solve questions really easily. See, and then I also made notes of the entire rivers. This also it looks like a lot, but it doesn't take much time. Trust me. So each river, where is it originating? Where is it merging in the sea? What are the tributaries and important, like you know, locations where it's passing through? This is a good one-time investment, and you can always sort of use it. Yeah, same. I I did the same with uh, forests of India, and there's always a question as to you know some region is falling in some dry deciduous forest, which national park is in which uh, region and all. And I also marked all the national parks and wildlife sanctuaries, everything on the map, so you can sort of think, okay, this national park is in this area in the map. And here it's in a particular color, so you can sort of juxtapose both the things and decide uh, which one it is. See, these are the, these are all the mountain passes and mountain ranges that I uh, said before. You know, you could see all of them. And then the more you look at it, and also you juxtapose the rivers thing, you are easily able to eliminate options and address them. Yeah, these are you know where all the important latitudes and longitudes are passing across the. Uh, Yeah, and then you sort of make a list of it, and you have very good knowledge. Particularly, say there might be a question in geography that a particular crop is growing in. You know, Brazil is the largest exporter of some crop. You know, apple, let's say, and you know Brazil is you know sort of a tropical country, and it's highly unlikely apple grows so much in a tropical country. So you can sort of mix and match this information, and you know push your con common sense forward and answer the questions. See, I just wrote down the list of all the. Topic of you know which latitude is passing through which countries and direction from that way to this way. Same, I marked all the oceans and seas of the world uh, world in this you know just one map. Uh, you can see all the Mediterranean Sea. You know everything is just marked. It's self-explanatory. Yeah, and I use different colors to sort of remember. This is all Pacific Ocean. That is all Indian Ocean. This is all Arctic Ocean and all of that. Yeah, these are all the climatic regions of the world. So these might look like it takes they take a lot of time, but trust me, they don't. They really come in handy. Yeah, and the entire soil regions of India. Yeah, basically again the soil qualities and all. These are the short notes that I quickly revised in the end, and that really came in handy. Now this section is about um, how to read current affairs. You know, a lot of us read current affairs, but end up not really doing well in that particular section. So uh, what we used to do is we used to make questions out of each page on the side next to this thing. See, I made two questions here. You know, Article One Thirty One cases only between center and state and not states and states. So I set traps for myself here. So second time when I come back for revision, I answer these questions first. And if I'm able to answer these questions, I just move on to the next page. If I'm not, again I'm getting back to this 
material that saves you a lot of time in terms of revision and also because you are setting yourself into traps here you are likely to avoid them in the actual exam because now you are used to it right so i used to make see questions like this for every page just one or two you know important stuff of questions here see these are all you know board accord removed ndfb from uaps schedule 1 this was one of the like you know happening issues then and you are you are setting up these traps here it's really easy for you to avoid them later yeah and also uh, uh, there was a question on nubra valley i think it was in last year or the 2020 attempt again you need to be slightly curious about what's happening around and just take a look at them that was a time when galvan clashes were happening so i sort of just looked up and map, mapped the entire thing here so uh, the question i think was see uh, nubra valley is at the foot of which glacier it was Siachen, see you can clearly see her. So be slightly curious about what's happening around. You have access to internet and Google, so you can just always Google up and be slightly curious about things. Then also with all the plethora of schemes that the current government is bringing in, I also made notes of the schemes, you know, just the important stuff. I used to keep this next to me while doing current affairs. And I would just put this thing, which ministry, whether it's a central sector scheme or centrally sponsored scheme. And you know, two to three important stuff, whether there is one nodal agency or something. And again, this list really came in handy for both prelims and mains and also the interview. You can always resort to them uh, while answering your mains too. Uh, these are all the schemes. Same, I made a list of all the species too that are there in general in the news and also that are actually there in you know, like the list when you uh, open a website of the uh, ministry. So it's, it's easy, you know, just I just put like two lines of it, where it is and what are the important things about it that I need to remember. Because there are just way too many species and it becomes really difficult to remember. And this I just used to keep next to me while doing current affairs material and just used to write those two to three things there and move on. Same, national parks. Now, uh, and this is a very easy and fun task because I used to challenge myself, I used to set four minutes time and like, you know, map all the 104 national parks on the map. Uh, and that comes in handy because now you've done this, you've also done the rivers, you've also done the climatic zones on the map. Now you can easily answer whether a river is passing through which national park or whether a national park falls in a tropical zone or an alpine zone and all. It becomes really handy. Same I did with tiger reserves, biosphere reserves and everything. And I also used to like keep, you know, the number of parks or number of wildlife reserves that are there. So at times there might be a question as to, you know, like Punjab has no tiger reserve. Now that I have crossed it out, I can quickly visualize this thing in my head and say, okay, Punjab does not actually have. Instead of running my mind through the entire list of 50 tiger reserves and then thinking, is this park actually in Punjab or is it in some other state? So this is what I did. Same, I also just marked the important latitude and longitudes of India and marked all the capitals here. Because I think 2019, there was a question which said, which of the following cities is closest to the Tropic of uh, Cancer? And now while you do it, you can see it's, it's ranchi and you know, or they might ask you to arrange these from west to east or east to west. So these all, this barely takes 10 minutes to even do. Yes, these are all the mountain passes that I uh, marked. You, if you're not analyzing your mock test, it's as important as just not taking the test, you know. So I used to spend at least four to five hours after each mock test and make notes out of it. Because you cannot be repeating the same mistake again in the actual exam. So, uh, I used to take an A3 sheet, I'm sure all of you guys know it has four sides, A3 sheet. And I used to make notes of all the 100 questions in just that A3 sheet. And whenever I'm starting my revision cycles, the first go-to ones are these short notes. And these are extremely helpful, you know. Even for this attempt, I, I sort of take, took a look at these notes of last year for like an hour. So, just the crux of the information, because one of the best things that coaching our institutes give us are the answer solutions that are there for prelims mock test. They are a huge repository of information. So I just used to make this, see. This is all for like one test, just these three pages. And also I would used to uh, uh, keep an Excel sheet like this and to monitor uh, my performance. So this was one of the beginning ones, you know, like these are all the sectional tests that I took. So I used to, uh, so you can always set the cutoff for your particular category looking at last three, four years cutoffs and do an average of it and put it there. And I used to calculate the scores and see which areas I'm doing okay, which areas I'm not doing okay. And this is why I, what I said in the beginning, you need to constantly evaluate yourself, you know, 
while doing this yeah, I know okay I probably did decent in environment and polity. Since I have limited time now instead of prioritizing environment and polity I would rather look at some other subject which I didn't do well which is science and technology. So uh, and this is an easy thing you know you just put in the formula you just put in the figures and it calculates it for yourself. So my goal was to just you know make it as much green as possible and I also used to have a tally of uh, how many questions I attempted. So one of my friends did something called operation 10,000 so she did like 100 mock tests worth of questions. I did not have the luxury because I was running really uh, late on my optional so I did around 3700 questions so I used to like calculate her. And yeah and this last one is how I used to sort of keep track of my daily routine. This is my this used to be my bedtime activity. So yeah this is for the February month. Uh, I, I would my goal used to be like you know fill as many boxes before I sleep you know these little things that sort of keep you pushed. So that's you know whether I have read the newspaper on that particular day, whether I made notes of newspaper, whether I woke up on time, whether I spent less than two hours on phone, whether I exercised, whether I sort of, I do journaling like in before sleeping you know sort of go over my entire day and how much time I spent on my options, how much time I spent on studying. This is exclusive of the newspaper thing, I don't put newspaper thing in it. Uh, yeah so that's how I used to do, see this is for the month of March. Yeah, I think that's that's mostly all I have. So, in case you guys have any questions, see uh, that only. So, like you said, when you do the risk categorization thing that I said, if it's an area which I'm not really comfortable in, say science and technology, it will mostly get pushed to three and four. And if it's a case you still need to do it, the uh, common sense thing that I told you, the permaculture thing, I had no clue of permaculture before I wrote the exam, but I ended up getting it correct. And credit goes to a uh, previous IPS officer, he is Archit Chandak from 2018 batch. So he has uh, sort of put up all of these things on his channel, on, on his Quora channel, how and how to eliminate these techniques. And I think that actually, and like one other thing that I also want to tell you guys is our subconscious mind is much more powerful than we allow ourselves to think. All of us have done science and tech in school, all of us have done environment in school. So if you are able to recall, koncham our dots connect chess koni. You can do it. In fact, I was quite surprised. I got more science and technology and environment questions correct this time than polity and economy. And I'm science and technology and environment are not my strong areas at all. So I think this also takes a bit of practice. This common sense thing, you know, you start uh, doing these questions and then you you get at it. But also remember, it's not a game of 200 on 200. You just need to clear the cutoff, right? That that's very important. And it's all, it's not like where your merit thing counts, such a how much above cutoff you've scored. It doesn't matter if you cleared nine, it 98 or if you cleared it 150, it doesn't matter. So put in the least amount of effort possible and then uh, do all this risk categorization and all of thing and just hit at the sweet spot, okay. Yeah, so in my first attempt, I mean I didn't really, proper mock test, I think I solved like around 15 of them before the actual exam. Like I said, the simulation mode, you know, and also very important thing uh, is to you bubble the OMR every time you do the mock test because one of my friends, uh, it might sound very trivial, but what happened with one of my friends is he's been through JE and also he's like, what is there in OMR? So obviously bubble kar hi lenge, so he was like that. So he never really bubbled OMR, but in the actual exam, which was his first prelims and which was mine too. The, it's a different level of tension. You don't feel it unless you sit in the exam hall. So his stand, hand started shivering and he couldn't bubble the OMR sheet. He marked about 85 questions in the question paper but he could only mark 65 in the OMR sheet. Now that prelims was gone, that meant his entire trajectory has gone a different direction. He couldn't clear the second prelims also because something else came in between. So if he had only took into mind that slightest thing of you know marking on OMR, practice it once in advance, his entire life would have taken a different trajectory you now. So give it the respect it deserves, take the, you know, this thing properly. Marks, I think properly I took 15 uh, to 16 marks. But in total I did around 3,700 uh, 3, questions, I, I guess. Because Insights has something called 90 days prelims plan which they released before prelims. Which has 25 questions of uh, paper 1 and 5 questions of CSAT. So I used to do that in the beginning. Like, you know, start slow and then build up. Don't start taking 100 questions in the beginning, you will be burnt out. Start slow and then build up on it. Fine. Around 15 to 16 should be good, but just mindlessly taking without the analysis part is just useless, you know. In, if it's a choice of, you know, taking another mock test or doing an analysis of one paper, always go for analysis of one paper instead of taking uh, another mock test. 
Oh yeah, definitely. So actually, the first mock interview that I did, like I said, I was preparing all from home, so I had no contact with anyone. The the first mock text at all, uh, first mock interview that I took was with Vishnu sir, and it was a big eye opener for me because I was completely laid back after means. I was like I was chilling for two months doing nothing, and then I I still remember the questions that sir asked me also. The first question was about some massacre called Sunduru massacre, which happened very close to my home. and i had no knowledge of that it was a big massacre you know which happened in the 90s so sir asked that and i was like okay what is this and then he bombarded me with questions from economic survey um, uh, and i had no clue because i did not do economic survey again so it was a big eye opener and it sort of pivoted my preparation okay these are my till then i was sort of uh, i mean i must admit i was slightly on the like over confident side you know like acha ab like you know i can sort of handle the interview wala situation but sir sort of brought me to the ground and pushed me into like you know that direction so i think credit is due to him for that see the note making thing i concur with what they've said i don't think it's important to make notes out of current affairs i mean on also another metric that all of you need to function by is the return on investment okay uh, i mean everything will have a return on investment imagine you're making notes out of newspaper every day maybe it will help you solve that one extra question in the prelims okay but it's not worth the return on your investment you're spending good one and a half hour every day for like good two years and it's helping you get that two extra marks in the actual exam might as well invest it in getting that if you imagine you're getting 9 out of 10 questions in politics correct might as well invest that time in getting 10 out of 10 questions in politics correct so i would not recommend making notes of uh, current affairs but i also did this mistake and i like to call it donkey work which i very proudly own for five months i nicely like made you know one and a half hour worth of time used to make notes out of newspaper and after five months it was just too much and i never looked at it after that and there are these people who are getting paid to make these magazines so you can never be better than them trust one source Uh, and the other stuff, this Nubra Valley question and all you asked, I think it just comes out of curiosity. Again, another mistake that I did in my first attempt was just completely stop reading newspaper before prelims. Um, at September, October was my prelims, and I sort of completely stopped looking at newspaper from September, and it went on until March. I did not look at it even during mains. I did not even look at it after mains. I only started looking at it during the interview, and I think that subconsciously costed me a lot in my interview. I didn't score well in my interview. I only scored 162. Um, um because i realized i was playing slightly on the defensive side because i was like what if there was this information gap in the 6 months that i never looked at the newspaper so take a look at the newspaper keep yourself abreast of what's happening around but don't excessively you know concentrate on newspaper also you know like make notes out of every little thing that's there and all uh yeah current affairs this thing and also start taking current affairs specific test you know there are uh, uh, i think every institute offers monthly current affairs test you know of june june ka current affairs july ka current affairs and all of that so uh, you can take those but i think i personally feel for say, given the trends from the last one or two years i think it's more about the conceptual clarity and you know the you your basic sense of understanding that they are really looking at than the current affairs themselves per se so yeah take your own call but don't overdo current affairs don't overdo newspapers is my suggestion uh, firstly i don't think marks are any metric to judge anyone's smartness uh, yeah so i did my 10th and 12th in tenali itself i was in state board and i had uh, 10 on 10 gpa in my 10th uh, standard and in time i was in mec uh, i had 975 in uh, my 12th and then i did my uh, master uh, bachelor's in ba honors economics from delhi university uh, st stephens college and i graduated in 2019 and i took the 2020 attempt and currently i am pursuing my masters in sociology from jawaharlal nehru university yeah that's there but uh, uh, this might look very rosy on the screen but it's a lot of trial and error and a lot of trials and tribulations you know nothing really comes in you have to do your own sort of thing and what is working for you what is not see after february and uh, february See, there is no notes of newspaper. I am even bubbling. This is when I realized my donkey work, and I stopped making the notes of newspaper. You will see the blanks in everywhere here. So, but before this, I used to do it. So, do your own. Like, take the risk, try it out, and then figure it out. And also, I really don't think this thing of you know, like, actually, your educational background has a say on what you are going to do in UPSC. I think nothing is further from truth than that. You know, it has nothing to do with your uh, this thing. Sure, it might help you in terms of your contacts, your friends, the level of you know atmosphere. where you grew up in but that's about it i think hard work patience consistency do go a long way than smart 
this or whatever your marks that you are thinking about in the academic career so yeah i think that's hopefully that addressed your question it was a great session thank you vijay uh, so some are some of the questions are there in here online uh, in telugu he want the answer to be in telugu so what he mentioned means konda ekkini vallaki konda ekkina vallaki ఈజీ అనిపిస్తుంది కానీ కొండ ఎక్కని వాళ్ళకి కొండ ఎక్కాడే అనిపిస్తుందంట సో మీరు ఫస్ట్ అటెంప్ట్లో యూ క్లియర్డ్ సిక్స్ ఎయిటీ టూ ర్యాంక్ ఈజ్ అ వెరీ బిగ్ అచీవ్మెంట్ విత్ మై ఫిఫ్టీన్ ఇయర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ దట్స్ ఎ గుడ్ థింగ్ ఎనీ హౌ యూ గేవ్ యువర్ అటెంప్ట్ యూ విల్ బీ ఇన్ టాప్ హండ్రెడ్ దట్ ఐ నో సో ఎలా ఫస్ట్ అటెంప్ట్లో అంటే ఫస్ట్ అటెంప్ట్లో క్రాక్ చేయాలి అని అంటే మన మనస్థితి ఎలా ఉండాలి మన కమిట్మెంట్ ఎలా ఉండాలి ఓవరాల్ మన పర్ఫార్మెన్స్ ఎలా ఉండాలి అనేది అతను తెలుగులో అడుగుతున్నాడు కొంచెం తెలుగులో ఆన్సర్ చేయండి యా సో మొదటి విషయం ఏంటంటే ఈ జర్నీ ఏదైతే ఉందో ఈ వన్ అండ్ హాఫ్ ఇయర్స్ టూ ఇయర్స్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ అన్ ఈజీ వన్ అంటే ఈజీగా అయిపోయిన ఇది కాదు చాలాసార్లు నాకు కూడా చాలా లోగా ఫీల్ అవటము దేవర్ కొన్ని కొన్నిసార్లు మే అండ్ జూన్ ఆఫ్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ ఐ డిడ్ నాట్ టచ్ బుక్స్ అట్ ఆల్ ఫర్ గుడ్ టూ మంత్స్ బికాస్ అప్పుడు ఎందుకంటే నేను చాలా బ్యాడ్ పొజిషన్లో ఉన్నా ఇన్ టర్మ్స్ ఆఫ్ మెంటల్ హెల్త్ సో ఇట్స్ కామన్ ఫర్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ తెలుగులో ఒక సామెత ఉంది దూరపు కొండలు నునుపు అని సో మనకి అరే మనమే ఇలాంటి పొజిషన్లో ఉన్నాం బ్యాడ్ పొజిషన్లో ఎదుటి వాళ్ళు బాగా చదువుతున్నారు దే హ్యావ్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ గోయింగ్ గుడ్ ఫర్ దెమ్ సెల్స్ బట్ మనకి ఇట్లా ఉందని మనం విప్పులా సెల్స్ కిందకి ఇంకా బట్ మనం రియలైజ్ అవ్వాల్సింది ఏంటి అంటే ప్రతి ఒక్కళ్ళు వాళ్ళ వాళ్ళ యుద్ధాలు వాళ్ళ వాళ్ళ బ్యాటిల్స్ దే ఆర్ ఫైటింగ్ దెమ్ సెల్స్ మనం చూడలేము అవంతే సో యూ మస్ట్ గివ్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ దట్ క్రెడిట్ యూ మస్ట్ గివ్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ దట్ టైమ్ ఇదంతా చేస్తున్నందుకు అండ్ ఎనదర్ అడ్వైస్ థ్యాంక్స్ ఆ క్వశ్చన్ అడిగినందుకు నేను యాక్చువల్గా అందరికీ చెప్పాలనుకున్నాను ఏంటి అంటే ఈ మెంటల్ హెల్త్ ఏదైతే ఉందో అది చాలా చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఈ ఎగ్జామ్ విషయంలో సామెత ఉంది లైక్ యూనో సౌండ్ మైండ్ ఇన్ సౌండ్ సౌండ్ బాడీ సౌండ్ మైండ్ ఇన్ సౌండ్ బాడీ అన్నట్టు సో యువర్ ఫిజికల్ హెల్త్ అండ్ మెంటల్ హెల్త్ చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ అని నేను ఎగ్జామ్ వల్ల రియలైజ్ అయ్యాను సో ఎప్పుడైతే మీరు రియలైజ్ అవుతారో యువర్ మెంటల్ హెల్త్ ఈజ్ నాట్ ఓకే అని ఆల్వేస్ డోంట్ హెసిటేట్ ఎక్స్పర్ట్ అడ్వైస్ కానీ ఎవరో ఒకరితో మాట్లాడడానికి కానీ మీరు ఆలోచించద్దు ఎక్కువ సందేహించద్దు నేను మా ఒకసారి నాకు నవంబర్లో మెయిన్స్ టైంలో కంప్లీట్ బ్రేక్ డౌన్ అయిపోయాను నేను అసలు చదవలేకపోయాను అనమాట సో ఐ వెంట్ మా అమ్మ దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళి ఐ స్పోక్ టు హర్ ఫర్ లైక్ గుడ్ వన్ అవర్ ఏంటి నా మైండ్లో ఏమవుతుంది ఏంటి అని దెన్ బిఫోర్ ఇంటర్వ్యూ అగైన్ ఇలాంటి సిచ్యువేషన్ వచ్చింది ఇంకా వర్స్ సిచ్యువేషన్ సో ఐ సాట్ అ థెరపిస్ట్ యూనో ఐ కన్సల్టెడ్ ఎ థెరపిస్ట్ ఐ టుక్ వన్ సెషన్ ఏంటి వాట్ ఈస్ నా ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఏంటి ఏం జరుగుతుంది ఓకే ఐ హ్యావ్ దిస్ ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీ హై స్టాండర్డ్స్ ఫర్ మై సెల్ఫ్ అవి నేను మీట్ అవ్వలేకపోతున్నాను విచ్ ఈస్ ఐ హ్యావ్ దిస్ కాన్స్టెంట్ అన్హ్యాపీనెస్ ఇన్ మై హెడ్ అని ఆమె చెప్పాక నేను రియలైజ్ అయ్యాను అనమాట సో మీరు ఆ మెంటల్ హెల్త్కి ఎలా ఏది హెల్ప్ అయితే అది మీ పేరెంట్స్తో మాట్లాడటము థెరపీస్ని కన్సల్ట్ చేయటము ఏదైనా చేసి మీ మెంటల్ హెల్త్ని ప్రాపర్ ఇదిలో ఉంచుకునేటట్టు చూడండి అండ్ అగైన్ దిస్ థింగ్ నేను చేయగలను అని అనుకోవటం ఈజ్ ద బిగ్గెస్ట్ థింగ్ యూనో ఇన్ ది బిగినింగ్ యు ఆర్ నాట్ వెరీ డిఫరెంట్ ఫ్రమ్ ఎనీ వన్ ఎల్స్ ఈ ఫాదర్స్ మిగిలిన వాళ్ళు చేయగలుగుతున్నారు అంటే మనం కూడా చేయగలము అని అనుకోవటమే సగం కొండ ఎక్కేసినట్టు అయిపోతుంది ఇంకా అక్కడి నుంచి మిగిలిన సగం కొండ ఎక్కడం చాలా ఈజీ అవుతుంది ఎందుకంటే మనకి సగం కొండ ఎక్కేసామె అన్న కాన్ఫిడెన్స్ వస్తుంది కనుక సో మనల్ని మనం నమ్ముకోవటం ఈజ్ ద మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్ అట్ ద ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ ద డే అని నా ఈ మూడు నెలలు ప్రిలిమ్స్ జూన్ ఫిఫ్త్ ఉంది ఈ జూన్ ఫిఫ్త్ వరకు ఈ త్రీ మంత్స్ వాళ్ళ ప్రిపరేషన్ స్ట్రాటజీ ఎలా ఉంటే ప్రిలిమ్స్ క్లియర్ అవుతుంది so how they have to prepare for this 3 months till june 5th yeah they uh, ee 3 months are do or die and they make you or break you anatu ee 3 months so meer proper ga ee 3 months ni utilize cheskoni time is a very important factor indulo so mock tests proper revisions and nen chupichina chaala short notes nen ee last 3 months revision lo cheskona first time chadivina appudu cheskona kaadu so meer anko chare naaku inga time ledhu ee attempt odileskundam next attempt lo cheskundam ee notes lani but no ee notes lani nen in fact nen march lo start chesa chadara meek you are still in february nen optional chaala late ga start cheyadam valla nen march lo vachanu to prelims revisions anamata so ee short notes cheskodamu mocks cheyatamu అండ్ ఒకటి నాకు బాగా హెల్ప్ అయింది స్టేయింగ్ అవే ఫ్రమ్ సోషల్ మీడియా ఐ డోంట్ గో టు ద ఎక్స్టెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఆస్కింగ్ యూ టు స్టే అవే ఫ్రమ్ సోషల్ మీడియా
means some students are telling that I will do 50 or 10. So what is your with your experience whether 30 or 20 or how many we have to do final competition? So uh, I think it is uh, individual to individual ke maratho untundi any testal tis ko valya nesi. Then inda ke chapna to mere analysis chess ko ni marks Excel sheet chupi chani inda ka. And the analysis chess ko ni area lo baag chess naalo chat le do. Alagi uh, idi alagi short notes ila chess ko ni. Uh, I 15, 16 sari pene, first attempt. Lo. Second attempt, I na only one test. I have to do the last decision. Tis kuna. But still, actually, I have last year. I have to calculate So, I area lo confident that I have to do But minimum, I recommend 10 tests. I have to do But minimum, take 10 tests. This opportunity, sir, I also want to emphasize don't take CSAT lightly. Chala mandi na friends uh, prelims GS paper one lo hundred hundred and twenty or such koni paper two lo goranga faile papa mala danta mene kill pointi so respect even di dan ki arey me maths background in chocha mo engineering background in chocha mo chayga lamo anko adu I also took around six to seven proper CSAT tests in my first attempt uh, uh, so adi sir I minimum ten ideally around sixteen to twenty if you are still not doing good revise and take about twenty five but don't do uh, madly eli poi fifty sixty ala urke chess kun nelte upyoga mein mandal so ala anti chayad do so uh, I, I remember it uh, we were been doing mock uh, interview sessions nearly thirty forty we did na uh, thirty forty we did everyone were been with casuals but uh, only Vijay was be, was been in a formal dress for just our one to one sessions or for where we had a online COVID time it was, huge COVID time it was, every day 9 pm, yeah, every day 9 pm for one hour nearly 30, 40 days we did. So everyone were very informal, Vijay was very formal, then I thought this person is going to crack and we also had a discussion whether to write prelims this time or not, last one week back. Yeah, friends should go to him also. Apart from my parents, he was also like, right, they both are going to be there, they 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 are going to be there